So in that case now, why is it important to have a legal advice or a lawyer in business matters or in business activities of individuals? There are, many, there are many reasons why you should have a lawyer in your business transactions. First, for example, I have a professional indemnity whereby should I do any mistake as a lawyer, I'm covered up to a certain amount of money, maybe maybe about 100,000 Kenya, Kenya shillings or 100 million Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. there's, that, there's that professional indemnity that all lawyers take. Yes. And should any mistake be done, properly done, then you're covered to a good extent. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the beauties you should know usually when you're going to a lawyer for services, there is a backup should anything go wrong out of, out of an honest mistake. Yes, yes. Secondly, um, there, there are those nitty gritties that you might not understand at first glance. But because a lawyer is trained and can also still go and look back and burn the midnight oil and understand what you might not understand as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. it's always good to have a lawyer on board. And particularly, remember, lawyers deal with different sectors, different mm -hmm. transactions, and they become good at it and they know how to spot out um, what is not right or what is good for you uh, yes. at, without taking too much time that you might not realize. And also the legalese that is also involved in the in drafting of the contract and all that. Mm -hmm. a, a contract might be there and you don't understand what it is, but once you give a lawyer, then the lawyer understands and really understands what the ramifications or what, uh, what it actually translates to into yeah. the common mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. So that's why it is important to have your lawyer look at these documents. On that note, there is uh, the top mistakes that, uh, from your experience, you have seen entrepreneurs make as they run their business uh, activities. What what comes on top of your mind as far as that is concerned? What what comes on top of my mind when uh, entrepreneurs uh, are starting out and making business? Sometimes they have not started out. Now they've actually they are now at the growth stage and all that. For me, what I've seen entrepreneurs make mistakes in is not seeking legal counsel in good time. Mm -hmm. Because they feel lawyers are expensive. Yeah. But the problem is, you avoid that cost, mm -hmm. and now you're even going to pay more. Aren't they expensive? I think they are reasonable, depending yeah. on what they... <laughs> I, I think we are reasonable because of the kind of services we are offering. Yes, yes. And what you have to get into to make sure our clients are, are, are covered. Mm -hmm. Now... On that breath, one, one other issue that um, that entrepreneurs have seen making a blunder in is not getting the intellectual property rights. Mm -hmm. And the best way of getting the intellectual property rights, many times it's through your lawyers. Yes. Make sure you have those uh, uh, copyrights, those patents and all that. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important. Very important. Uh -huh. And now another element that I've seen now um, entrepreneurs also making mistakes is not getting the right licenses in good time and also not doing their research mm -hmm. because for example if you're getting into the hotel industry there are those food and health safety requirements that you must adhere to if you don't do that those are things that are likely to get you into court mm -hmm. at some point or spend waste a lot of your money and and such getting into legal battles and all that Another aspect that I see entrepreneurs also not um, not taking care of, and of course maybe again it's because they are not seeking legal counsel in good time, is getting into contracts and arrangements without getting into transactions without having a properly thought out contract. Mm -hmm. I have seen entrepreneurs pick contracts from somebody else and use it in their own sector, but you see the contract that you write for somebody who is just who is just uh, doing a transaction of maybe 100 shillings of let's say 3,000 or 10,000 shillings mm. will not be as itemized and into details as somebody who is doing 100 million. That's right. You see, mm. because what you can lose in losing the 10,000 yeah. is very different from what you can lose when you lose the 100 million. Mm -hmm. So not getting into proper contracts, picking different contracts that are not applicable in their sector, mm -hmm. I, I saw one, for example, okay, this is a tenant and all that, and says, in case of any disagreement, this matter will go for arbitration to the ICC. 
so <laughs> are you seeing <laughs> and you see now here yeah. is a rent maybe of 30,000 50,000 yeah. ICC before you even get your flights there and all that you're talking of millions sometimes yes. so sometimes just that that picking things and trying to to do things yourself I, I, I believe has really cost entrepreneurs a lot in the process. Yeah. So that's seeking legal, legal advice, not doing enough research, not paying out the legal things that are required. For example, just paying out your licenses, seeing exactly what should be done. If, if you're having, uh, depending again on the industry you are, mm. making sure the WIBA is paid in good time, yeah. you see? Mm. Uh, th those are the things that I've seen entrepreneurs making mistakes on. And maybe you can be excused for the first, second year, and the third. But going forward, just please neaten up. Because of course it's understood when you're starting, things are not well structured. But at the first instance, at the earliest possible, please sort that out. But of course you'll end up paying more when, for example, in IP intellectual property, when your product is already in the market. For you now to retrieve and start saying that uh, you are the one having the rights and trying yeah, to yeah, have yeah. them can, can get tricky. And this IP, at what level does it play? Do we have uh, like a region like Kenya alone or a global market? Uh, it covers uh, intellectual property up to what extent? It, it depends on what you're getting involved in. Mm -hmm. And then actually there are different levels. Yes. yes. There's some intellectual, there's some, copy, there's, there's some rights that are within specific regions. And there are some, depending on how you register, they're actually covered, because some of them are covered by treaties. And treaties means uh, uh, the, the contracts have been agreed within several countries. And once you, for example, register onto one of them, then you're covered with, uh, in those countries. Mm -hmm. So for example, you have the Comesa, you have the AU and all that. Yeah. So depending on the one that you get into and how it is done, because it's a bit complicated and that's why you need a lawyer in that particular area. Yeah, then yeah. you'll know exactly where you're covered mm -hmm. and to what extent. Mm -hmm. Yes. And also for how long. Because there are some of them maybe you're just covered for one or two years. There are some you're covered for 10 years. There are some for more than that. So it's really important that when you're getting into it, seek legal counsel, do the research that is required so that you see what works well for you. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The other issue is um, the mistakes that uh, an entrepreneur does when incorporating co-founders and number two, investors. Investors. What are some of these uh, you've seen? Um, for co-founders and investors, I think one of the biggest mistakes uh, entrepreneurs do, they don't do research. They don't do research to find out, um, to find out the, to find out the, to find out more about their investors, the potential investors and the, and, and the, and the patterns and uh, the patterns and the culture of those investors. Because it's very important that when you're dealing with an investor, you should know how that investor works and uh, how that investor works. Because some of these investors are tricky. Some of them have not even really begun anything. We know of some investors who have, uh, who have shortchanged the entrepreneurs because the, the integrity does not matter with them. Then we know there are some investors whereby integrity is very, very important. So it's very important that whenever you're dealing with investors, always do a background check. We have we have a lot on uh, on the internet that you can deal with. You you can you can research on and find out about the investors. But also apart from that, there are those people that the investors have worked with. How have they worked with the people that they have invested in? Because there are some who are very rough, there are some who are very gentle, there are some who will hold you and help you grow. So it's very, very important to do a background check on the investors. One, you can go onto the net, that will be great, easy, you'll get so much. Another, see who has worked with these investors and how has it been. Mm -hmm. Take your time to find out about these investors. Yeah, yeah. On the element of co-founders, also do a background check. Find out, are these credentials really the, what they are talking about? I have seen some people presenting their papers and all that, but they cannot deliver. So do a background check on the co-founders you are working with. One thing that again, many times people don't realize that when it comes to co-founders, at some point, maybe you may need to now go and borrow from the bank. Now, when you are in partnership or these are shareholders on your company, 
yeah. and these people are badly rated at this at the crb mm -hmm. or they have a criminal record here and there you find you cannot move yes, sir. you find you cannot move mm -hmm. so it's always good to do a background check on your co-founders and be very open with each other mm -hmm. if any of you has had a hitch at some point it's good to know from the very beginning yeah, and yeah. see how to deal with it mm -hmm. so that you don't get a shock whereby now as a company there you are now going to look for a hundred million and you find there's this car 10 million this co-founder never paid yeah, yeah. yes mm -hmm. and has been backlisted and all that so those are some of the things that is it's, it's important that you find out about your co-founder their personalities also what kind of how do they relate with people because again it's not enough for you to just do your business well but what are your priorities how do you deal with clients how do you deal with staff how do you deal with suppliers you know yeah. so it's one thing to pay money but what what language what language how is your behavioral pattern in the industry it's very very critical because some people will move away from you not because you don't have the product but because you don't serve them well because you don't give them the time and attention that they need i'll give you a good example i'm just thinking of it's okay uh, 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 just off whereby sometimes the culture of the people you're dealing with really matters mm. I started putting on specs way back when I was in high school so we went to this these opticians but then two three years down the line we had other opticians in the area yeah and my dad said don't go there let's go to this place and I knew my dad was this kind of person who was who really minded how he was handled yeah. you see mm. so sometimes depending on whom you put at your front you may lose or gain some clients yeah. so based on that be very 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 careful and again you know there are some clients who want very rough rough stuff i mean they are in that industry whereby roughness is the name of the game yeah. so just see whom you're working with where and let them be suitable for that area mm -hmm. yes